Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting a short training course on unsteady heat conduction equation. Today we will be talking about analytical solution of 2D steady heat conduction equation or this particular equation also known as Laplace equation. We are working on unsteady heat conduction equation. However, we thought of making a video on this uh, solution of Laplace equation because solution of Laplace equation is also done with separation of variables and we have talked about separation of variable in the context of solution of unsteady heat conduction equation as there is a direct correlation between these two so if you learn about those two solutions simultaneously then it helps and that is why we are also talking about steady heat conduction equation in two dimension so again we will we'll be talking about brief introduction to separation of variables which, which we have already covered in the previous video and we will talk about steady heat conduction equation significance of it boundary conditions and again homogeneity this is very important so homogeneity of boundary conditions is necessary because it it helps you to to use separation of variable as a solution we will also talk about non homogeneous boundary conditions in the advanced stages of this particular course that will come after we cover all the things all the basic things uh, yeah we will talk about Fourier series orthogonality again because this is very important in the context of this solution we have already covered Fourier series and orthogonality but every time we make a video we have to discuss about it because the solution is not possible without orthogonality so again uh, let us pay homage to Joseph Fourier because uh, he did the excellent work and because of that we can have a solution for Fourier equation or this heat equation and we use this solution in every aspect of engineering and science related calculations so <clears throat> this is the Laplace equation where you can see there are two space derivatives in x direction and y direction we have already talked about the physical significance of this space derivative second order space derivative so it signifies how the temperature is deviated from the average of two adjacent points so if you are talking about a particular point here then you should look at what is happening in these two adjacent points and if there is a difference between the average of the adjacent point and its own temperature then there will be a heat flow so you can look at the previous videos where you can have more insights into this physical significance so uh, let me explain the uh, problem so we have this particular equation we have to solve it in this particular domain so x is varying from 0 to 1 this would be y sorry y is also varying from 0 to 1 so we have a rectangular block like this where your x is spanning from this is 0 and this is 1 y is also spanning from 0 to 1 and we know the temperature at the corners so what we need to do is we need to solve for the interior points and that is why I have not taken the equal sign because from the boundary condition itself you know these values and we have to solve for the interior point so don't be confused why we are not using the equal sign you can also use the equal sign but the concept physical concept is the boundary temperatures are already known and based on this we will be solving for the interior temperature so those are the boundary conditions here we don't have the time uh, related issue and that's why there is no initial bound initial conditions we have only boundary conditions and those boundary conditions are there it would be four boundary conditions as we know from the degree of freedom analysis that as this is second order space derivatives and there are two coordinates so two plus two there should be four boundary conditions so the first boundary condition is at any x y equal to zero so any x means this line y equal to 0 so this particular line so t is t is, I mean 0 so we can see the temperature is 0 here so this particular line then at any x y equal to l that means this particular line we have 
any, we can have any function fx, any homogeneous function for the time being like x minus x square. So we will not talk about specific functions in this video, but I have just taken an example. This could be x minus x square and this is the x minus x square distribution. So other two boundary conditions at any y x equal to 0, that means this particular vertical line. So t is equal to 0, you can see. And this one is at x equal to 1, that means here for any y, that means this vertical line again t0. So what is happening? You have temperatures equal to 0 at three different walls and you have a different temperature, a function of fx at the top wall. So for an example, I have taken x minus x square, but today I will not be talking about specific function. We will be talking about a generic function. And then in the upcoming videos, we will try to use different functions and to, uh, to get the solution. So we have to solve for t, x, y the interior points and we do super separation of variables. So what we uh, what we assume is so this t x y is the combination or the multiplication of two functions x and y where x solely depends on coordinate x and y capital Y solely depends on coordinate y. So this is the separation step and then we carry forward. So what we do is basically in this particular differential equation we put this. So, if you see, this is partial derivative, but after we do the separation, then uh, this partial derivative can be converted into total derivative. Like, if you want to differentiate with respect to x, then this could be taken as a constant, and you can have a differentiation of this, that is again second order differential, and that is why you can see y has been taken out as a constant, and the differential of the x two times. Similarly, with respect to y, x is taken as a constant and differential of y with respect to small y two times. <clears throat> so this is how the equation, the Laplace equation is converted into a kind of total derivative form and then what we do, we will put all the y with the differential coefficient of y and x with the differential coefficient of x. So that rearrangement we do, what we are doing is we are dividing by x and y, x into y basically. So this is becoming 1 by x, x function of x and this is becoming <coughs> 1 by y, y. Now what we can do is we are taking this particular term in the right hand side of the equation. So you can see this becomes minus of this and as these two things are equal that can be equated with a particular constant or with a particular function. So this is k. Now this k <coughs> we assume as lambda square in the later stage but the thing is this if this is k then there are two possibilities. This could be equal to k and this could be equal to minus k and the reverse is also true. That means this particular one might be equated with minus k. In that case this one should be equated with plus k. Now the question may arise is where we should put the negative sign in, in the y equation or in the x equation. So that is a confusion and it should be appeared in your mind like in your in the in the books you will see I mean somewhere it will be positive and somewhere it will be negative. But our task is to understand why we are exactly taking positive for a particular case and negative for the other case. So before going to that particular thing, why it is positive and why it is negative, let us look at the solution first. So k will be again equated with lambda square for the ease of solution. This is nothing but for the ease of differential equation solution. So here in, with the x we go with the negative sign and that gives me, we already know if this is a negative sign, it will give me a solution which has sine and cosine functions. So this is a periodic solution. And with positive lambda square, we'll get exponential functions and the solution will be linear combination of exponential functions. So we assume the <coughs> solution as A exponential lambda y and B exponential minus lambda y. So exponent this particular thing can also be written as the hyperbolic functions. So C1 sine hyperbolic lambda y plus c2 sine hyperbolic minus lambda y. So 
at this point we are clear with this concept so this is a kind of periodic function so it can have different frequencies but it is a periodic function that means same value will be repeated at least once it may be multiple times but same value would be repeated at least once in this is combination of exponential functions so this is not periodic so it, it will either grow with uh, x or I mean not x y it is either grow with y or it will attenuate with y it depends on this values like a and b because you have exponential of lambda y and exponential of minus lambda y it will try to decay the function where it will try to augment the function so based on the coefficients it will be determined whether this entire function will be monotonically increasing or it will be monotonically decreasing anyway this particular function is either a increasing function or a decreasing function this is not a periodic function now let us go back to the boundary condition if you look at this diagram so at the left hand side you have t0 in the right hand side also t0 so the solution I mean in order to get a physical solution you should have a function which varies like this and again come back to zero or multiple times it oscillates and come, comes back to zero but whatever the solution is it has to start from zero and it has to end at zero so this is the concept of periodicity so along x direction again I am repeating along x direction the solution must be periodic and in order to get a periodic function you should have negative sign here because if it is negative then only you get a solution which is a combination of sine and cosine functions or a periodic function that is why we take negative sign here in with the x because this is satisfy the physical scenario now let us go to the y direction what happens this is 0 and this is at some function so that would be with a higher temperature or a lower temperature but whatever it is either if it is positive then the higher temperature will reduce to 0 if it is negative a lower temperature will increase and it will become 0 so this is not a periodic function either it will attenuate or it will grow with space so along this direction we should have kind of combination of exponential functions and that is why we assume <coughs> negative I mean not negative we assume actually positive here so yeah what I was talking about initially randomly we have put k equal to positive with this and k equal to negative with this but we cannot go ahead with this because if we go ahead with this it will lead to an unphysical solution that is why if you see we have taken negative lambda square with x and positive lambda square with y just to be aligned with the physical understanding of the problem so this is where engineering mathematics comes so it is not about just moving ahead with the theorems moving ahead with the steps it is also about understanding the physical scenario because this is the step where we actually understood the physical problem and we go ahead with the correct solution so at this point we have a solution for x and we have a solution for y so the entire solution will be multiplication of these two but before we go into this let us look at the problem again so after the solution we have an arbitrary constant c1 c2 so in x we have two arbitrary constants and in y we have another two arbitrary constants this would be c3 and c4 let me just change it this will be c3 and c4 okay so let us proceed so we have four arbitrary boundary arbitrary constants c1 c2 c3 and c4 now this is the solution for x we all know now let us input the boundary condition so we had a boundary condition at t equal at x equal to 0 for all y temperature is equal to 0 
so we can go back and see so x equal to 0 for all y so this is the for all y x equal this is the boundary condition and this is x equal to x equal to l for y, all y temperature is equal to 0 so these two particular walls so we, we can do one thing we can we can take this diagram here so that <clears throat> our understanding becomes more clear we can actually see when we are solving the problem okay so yeah so again just see at x equal to 0 for all y so this is the line t equal to 0 so if this is equal to 0 then the x is also equal to 0 at x equal to 0 because this is valid for all y so x 0 is equal to 0 similarly x 1 is equal to 0 so this particular vertical axis so now let us put this to boundary condition initially what we do at x equal to 0 we put it so x equal to 0 this is 0 so this becomes 0 now c1 sin 0 sin 0 is 0 so <clears throat> this particular term vanishes now c2 cos 0 cos 0 is equal to 1 so 0 is becoming equal to c2 but in that case c2 has to be 0 yeah so c2 is 0 otherwise you will not satisfy this boundary condition and that is why c2 is equal to 0 so again i am repeating if we put this condition we reach to a conclusion where c2 equal to 0 now if c2 is equal to 0 so with this the term does not exist so it becomes the solution becomes only sine function like c1 sine lambda x now let us put the other boundary condition at x equal to 1 so at x equal to 1 the function is 0 so again this is 0 when you put x equal to 1 it becomes sine lambda so c1 sine lambda is equal to 0 so c1 sine lambda is equal to 0 we can say sine lambda is equal to 0 if sine lambda is equal to 0 then lambda it becomes n pi this is the generic solution we know from the trigonometric functions so now what we can do we can plug in the value of lambda in the equation as we know c2 is equal to 0 though the solution becomes x x equal to c1 sin we have put the value of lambda n pi x okay now the first boundary condition first set of boundary condition that is this vertical axis and this vertical axis we have plugged in and we have reached to a conclusion to this but mind it yet we have not we have not explored the value of c1 c1 is yet to be determined but in this step we have applied two boundary conditions and we have information for two what two informations we have information we have we have information for c2 which is equal to 0 we have information of lambda which is equal to n pi so we have invested two boundary conditions and we have returned two outputs now let us go ahead with the other solution that is y y c3 sin hyperbolic lambda y and c4 cos hyperbolic lambda y. For this also we have two boundary condition. So this two boundary condition at y equal to 0 and y equal to l. So this particular one which is t equal to 0 and this particular one which is fx. I mean either x minus x square this is a particular one but this is fx for the time being. So yeah. So this is 0 and this is fx. So let us plug in y equal to 0. So y 0 is equal to 0. Now again sin hyperbolic 0 is 0. So this term vanishes. And <coughs> what happens? Uh, cos hyperbolic 0. This is 1. So c4 is becoming equal to 0. So c4 is 0. So if c4 is 0, you have only this solution. That is y y equal to c3 sin. Lambda we have already, we, we already know. Lambda is equal to n pi so n pi y so we have invested this particular boundary condition and we have reached to this conclusion so entire solution t x y is a multiplication of x and y so x was c1 sin n pi x and y is now c3 sin n sin hyperbolic n pi y so we have plugged in 
Now we reach to a conclusion where there is a multiplication of two coefficients c1 and c3. Now two co arbitrary constants, the multiplication will be another arbitrary constant. So this c1 and c3 multiplication is taken as cn or we can uh, we can explore it as a new c because the same notation you can get rid of the notation you can tell it a n b n or whatever you want so, but for the time being i have assumed this is c n so the ultimate thing is two constants have been reduced to one and we are left with another boundary condition so we will invest this boundary condition in this equation and we will get the information about c n because once we have the information about this constant then we have the entire solution and again why there is a summation because n can be varied from 0 to an infinite value and that is why the solution is an infinite series and uh, we have to find out c n for all the values of n that means we have n number of arbitrary constants now let us invest this boundary condition and try to get the information for c n so yeah uh, we know that at y equal to 1 this is fx so we put fx and y equal to 1 so here y is equal to 1 we have put and this is sin n pi x because only y equal to 1 so now what you have to do uh, we can again see cn is a constant and sin n pi sin hyperbolic n pi is another constant again multiplication of these two gives rise to another constant say a n we define a n so the solution reduces to this is not the solution after putting the boundary condition it becomes fx equal to summation of 0 to n a n sin n pi x so you can understand this is a Fourier series a Fourier sign series and we know how to how to determine the constant from a Fourier sign series so what we will be using, we will be using orthogonality. So again, I am telling what is orthogonality. If you have sin n pi x, if you multiply with multiply it with sin m pi x, then if m not equal to n, then all the terms become 0. And if m equal to n, then this term remains. So we will multiply with sin m pi x in order to get rid of all the terms instead sin n pi x. So that is what we have done. We have multiplied with sin n pi x both the sides and we are taking a, a integration from 0 to 1. Now you can ask me why 0 to 1 because if you see the problem our uh, expansion is 0 to 1. I mean our domain is 0 to 1. So practically it is minus infinity to plus infinity but for our realistic case this is expanding from 0 to 1 and that is why it is 0 to 1. So yeah, so we, we have get rid of all the other terms. We are only left with the terms where n equal to m. So sin n pi x into sin n pi x giving to 2 sin square n pi x. We have adjusted this 2 and 2 sin square n pi x is equal to 1 minus cos 2 n pi x. And in the left hand side, we have this integration. We can't do this integration once we uh, put the value of fx but as this is a generic form we are not worrying about this particular integral we are more worried about this integral and if you see integral of this cos 2 pi x it will become sin 2 pi x and the, uh, the limit is from 0 to 1 so it will be sin n pi something and sin 0 so both are 0 so contribution from this part is become will become 0 so the only the contribution from this one into dx so dx will remain so integral of dx will be x and 0 to 1 limit it will be 1 so we have done this yeah so the entire integration gives you a value 1 so if you multiply a n by 2 into 1 it becomes a n by 2 so from here you get the value of a n so if you do this integration we will get the value of a n so now what you need you need a1 a2 a3 just put the values of n you get different values so then you have we have to plug in this a n into the main equation of t x y so we know the relation between a n and c n so from there if you know a n you can calculate c n and in the equation you can actually plug in and get the ultimate solution so today uh, we stop here 
So what we have done is we have done a generic solution for the Laplace equation and in the upcoming videos we will try with different fx function, different realistic functions and we will try to get the ultimate solution and again I am telling this is a kind of a series where n can be varied to a large number but for practical purposes if we have this solution and if we take up to 4, 5 or 6 terms then it gives you the realistic solution. In engineering we are not bothered about uh, I mean 0.01% error or something. So if you take 4 or 5 terms this will give you a reasonable solution. So we will be continuing with other uh, I mean functions and then we will be continuing with numerical methodologies because in many cases we don't have an analytical solution or it is very difficult to achieve analytical solutions for certain cases. So numerical techniques are very much important and that is why we will be talking about those numerical techniques there are multiple numerical techniques and their characteristics so we will talk about all those things one by one and once we are done with numerical then we will be going to the advanced level problems of heat transfer engineering solutions of that so this series will be continuing for long so we will keep updating videos on it so it will be helpful if you support us and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.